This video is about how to install Windows XP from a standard Microsoft Windows XP ISO file using a USB drive to boot from. You can install onto an AHCI a SATA target system using this method and you don't have to alter the ISO. So first of all we need to download RM Prep USB which is a Windows utility from the RM Prep USB website. You don't have to install this, there's a portable um, version. You can just copy it to a folder and run it from there. But it's easier to install it and there's no uh, adware on it or anything like that. It's completely uh, benign and you can uninstall it at any time. So just download the uh, installer and run it to install our prep USB onto your Windows system. So once you've installed our prep USB, you need to download the easy to boot payload files. These are the it's just a bunch of Grub for DOS files that you copy onto your USB drive once you've made it. So you can get it from the website on tutorial 72A, the easy to boot version 1 tutorial, and just save the, uh, the zip file uh, somewhere on your hard drive. So now we've got all three files. We've got the uh, easy to boot files, we've got the Windows XP ISO, which is a standard uh, Windows XP ISO file, standard Microsoft ISO file. It doesn't need to be enlighted or have extra drivers added to it. And we make our USB drive by running RM Prep USB. You can format it as NTFS or you can use FAT32 if you wish. And uh, we just don't copy any files to it at the moment. Let me so this will wipe your USB drive or your hard USB hard disk. So uh, just be warned. Uh, if you're formatting it as an NTFS and you find that for some reason it fails to format, uh, try formatting it as FAT32 first and then afterwards format it as NTFS. So once you've done that we need to install grub for dos So make sure that no user prompts is unticked and install it twice. The first time to the master boot record press enter when you see this black black window and say yes to copy over the grub loader file and the second time uh, say no to install it to the partition boot record um, if you install it to both the master boot record and the partition boot record you'll find it will boot on a, a lot more systems and again say yes to copy the grub loader file it's the same file but might as well copy it twice. So just check that it's all finished OK with the status box at the bottom there. And note that uh, the drive letter that uh, we've got. So now we need to unzip the easy to boot files and copy them over to the USB drive that we've just formatted. So I'll use a 7-zip for this and just say yes to copy all. Copy everything over. So now we need to just copy over the Windows ISO file. So we can find the uh, drive letter, just to explore the drive letter in our prep USB or just use Windows Explorer. And we need to add the XP ISO file to the ISO Windows XP folder. If you've got a Windows 7 ISO, you can add that into the ISO Windows Windows 7 folder, or a Vista folder, or a Server 2008 folder. And lastly, we need to make sure that all the files on that drive are contiguous. So we run WinContig on the drive to make sure that it's all contiguous. This should be fairly quick because the drive's been freshly formatted. Just make sure that it says at the bottom all files are contiguous. So our drive should be ready now to boot, but we'll just check that it is bootable by using the QEMU button in Iron Prep USB. You don't need to uh, have a virtual hard disk, so just set zero for that option. And the memory size can be anything as long as it's over a few hundred megabytes. And we'll just check that it boots under QEMU. If it does, then it means that your USB drive is bootable, and it should boot on any real system that you, that you use it on. And just make sure that it says Windows install one present, because you've got one ISO present. So now you need to unplug your USB drive 
and plug it into your target system. But for demonstration purposes, I'm doing this in a, a virtual machine uh, just to show you what happens. So first of all, when you boot to the drive, you select the Windows option, and then you select the first option, which is uh, step one. And there's only one ISO present, so choose that ISO. And then for this option, try at the default, which is just say yes, or, or number two, which is the default, using the Fire Disk driver. If for any reason that your install doesn't work at XP, then try option three at this point instead. But option two generally works on most systems. It'll then automatically detect the PCI ID um, ID of your of your controller. So in this case, I've got a SATA controller configured, an AHCI controller, and you can see it's picked the right driver for my system. So your driver will differ depending on what system you you run it on. And if you've got an IDE system, then you'll only have one uh, driver, the file disk driver, picked, and you'll have no uh, mass storage driver. So we go through uh, stage one of uh, Windows text mode setup. You don't need to press F6 at all. Just let it carry on automatically. Answer the questions. Press F8. Format the hard disk as usual. And follow it through. So at the end of the text mode setup, you need to reboot back to the USB drive again to get the easy to boot menu again. It's very important you do this second step. Don't try to boot from your from your um, target hard drive system. Uh, it won't work. So now let's choose the same option again, Windows install. But this time we need to run step two. Uh, this is for systems with 512 megabytes of RAM or more. Um, you should always use this option unless you actually have got less than 512 megabytes of RAM in your target system, in which case you'll have to use the low RAM option, which doesn't always work. So it's best to use the, uh, the 512 megabyte plus option first. Just let it boot to the, the default so through the default questions, and then go through the uh, normal GUI mode setup install. And you'll need to install the firewall disk driver, so answer yes when you're prompted to install that driver. Answer the usual XP setup questions, which are greatly speeded up here, and you should get right through to the end after about 20 odd minutes until it reboots again. So you should now remove the USB drive and let it boot from the hard disk drive. But for demonstration purposes, I'll boot using easy to boot and choose the boot from hard disk option. And as you can see, it'll go through the final setup stages for Windows XP and leave you with, hopefully, a working XP system. Of course, you'll have to add the uh, drivers for your particular system um, and uh, add all the Windows updates, etc and of course activate it uh, with the proper key. And the last thing you'll see is uh, this little uh, blue box here, which um, is asking if you want to remove the firewall disk driver which was installed to join the setup process. So I'd recommend you just answer yes to this, uh, and it'll ask you to restart. You can say yes or no, it doesn't really matter. And uh, you should now be left with a working XP system. For full instructions, visit rmprepusb.com, tutorial 72A. Thanks.